How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. With this video, I want to start another series where I discuss the things that I learned um, while making the short film, The Mars Incident. You can see it in the description down below if you haven't, it's really cool. Uh, but I learned a lot of things, I want to share it with you guys. Now we're going to start with lighting. In these couple of chapters, I'm going to start reviewing the several types of lighting scenarios that I have for my scenes. There are some places where I have a very particular type of lighting, so uh, make sure you hit that bell for notification and you subscribe so you get all my uh, videos when they come out. If you are brand new to using Unreal Engine, to doing cinematics in Unreal Engine, or even to dealing with sequencer, I highly recommend that you visit the playlist below that I have for beginners because I'm going to be skipping through a whole lot of things with sequencer and cameras and all that. So make sure you've reviewed the beginner part so you don't get lost in some of the things that I'm going to say here. So without further ado, uh, we're going to start with the first scene, which is uh, when the character wakes up and uh, let's get started. So this is one of the scenes. Actually, you see the guy here and let's look at who this is. It's actually a very cool alien that I've uh, got from the marketplace as usual. So let's just put a point light here so you can see who the alien is. It's actually a pretty cool alien from the marketplace. Uh, I'm going to make another video with the list of assets that I've used for the short film, but this was a cool alien. I wanted to keep it obscure because I didn't want to reveal the monster in the short film. But yeah, this this is one uh, um, of the assets that I got that I showed to you it was a pretty cool alien. But uh, let's talk about lighting. Now, the way that this is configured, so we are in space. There's got to be some uh, illumination coming this way. And uh, we also have some LEDs and things going around. So I'll, I'll walk you through the scene as I play it. Now, let's load the sequence so you can see where we're at. Now, you can see the sequence starts and I have my metahuman in place. You can see some errors that I didn't include in the shot. That's That's what I call movie magic. Every time you hear me, say movie magic is I'm cutting out the things that look bad in the shot by using very particular camera. Now this in is a little bit darker than what you saw in the short film. And if I go into the camera, let's just go to game mode, game view. So you can see, uh, I think, yeah, he didn't load up correctly that time, but here he is and he's actually well lit. So even though this is a dark ish scene because it's not fully dark it's not fully nighttime because it's in space in space there's always a sun um i wanted to have a little bit of light on him because this is a room a sci-fi room usually have a ton of leds and i did want him to be well lit because usually when you see in movies is they do a particular shot and then they color grade and that's why usually in movies blue signifies darkness but uh i just graded this in a very particular way because he is in a sci-fi station after all so as you can see, this is the close-up shot. I have everything cranked up. That includes the some ray tracing options. So um, if you don't see your metahuman looking like mine, you may want to go into ray tracing here and make sure you have use hardware ray tracing when enable and support hardware ray tracing. Also ray trace shadows. This is going to significantly slow down your system. And you must have an RTX card for this to work. You don't necessarily have to have a high-end RTX card for this to work. You may want to just do without ray trace shadows if that's the case. I'm just showing you the settings that I have right here. So you can see this is a close-up. And we're going to talk about lighting right now. Then we're going to go into the cameras and the focal length. And as you can see, this is a very weird shot where he wakes up. And I just selected a very particular one. And again, this is being well lit just because um, I wanted to capture the whole thing. And he looks really good as a metahuman over here. And again, one of the important things when you're lighting a metahuman, I believe I've said this in a video before, but in just in case, uh, a couple of things. And one of the criticism that I got from the trailer ish, uh, the first trailer that I released for the short film was that there was some noise here in between his eyebrows that got corrected with the hardware ray tracing and also his eyes look a little bit dead so we are accustomed to having this pinpoint light on the eyes you can see it in every movie you can see it in every picture 
it's, it's just a thing that it's there every time and when it isn't, we can notice. So if you want your uh, metahumans to look a little bit more cinematics, try to match your lights in order for the lights to appear on the eyes, even though if it's a fake light, because this is a totally fake light, that's just a red light that's in front of him, um, there should be something lighting him up. And the other thing that I do have here is a small, uh, I'm sorry, a small point light that is helping me out with the lighting of his face on this side. And you can see the pinpoint on his eye as well. So let me go through. By the way, this whole scene came with a bunch of point lights. I eliminated all the lights and relit because it was giving me some problems with the reflection capture. So I just, I just relit the whole thing. So let me just look for the lights over here. And let me see which one was that. There you go. That was the point light there. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a difference when I turn it on and off. Um, this actually looks fine. But I just needed that pinpoint light over there on both eyes because this one, like, like the red light wasn't showing. And if I make this red light show here, then it would affect the lighting over here. I didn't want my metahuman to have a flat look because what's kind of selling the image is the fact that he is being shadowed over here. And this is uh, a little bit not as prominent because I color grading. We're going to go into how I color graded this later on, but um, this was primarily what I was looking for. So some nice shadows on his face, the pinpoint of his light. One of the things that I must say when regards to lighting is facial hair with the metahuman can produce some artifacts when moving. So it's not very noticeable here in the engine, but when rendering, it's noticeable. Uh, some people notice it in the short film. And honestly, I tried everything I could to get rid of that. But, you know, probably the, the next time I have a metahuman on screen, he won't have as much facial hair as this one. The eyebrows are fine, but usually the facial hair, yeah, there was a little bit of a flickering. So as you can see over here, this, uh, let's, let's talk about this scene. So in this side, you can see that I pretty much turned off uh, everything that I had here. There is no lights here, pretty much. If I turn on the game view, actually, I do have a light, but it's turned off. And what I have here is, if I go over here, you can see I do have some keyframes here from this rec light, this rec light that is right here. This is what's creating that flickering effect. And I also added some sound later in post-processing, but that flickering, I just animated a intensity over here. And the reason why it flickers is because the intensity is linear. So again, there are some lights that you can buy that flicker. And actually I do have a light that flickers in here because I bought the pack. If I turn it on, this light that I have right here is from a NASA pack. That's really good. And you can see that it has a flickering option. However, that flickering option was not going with precisely the, the timing that I was looking for. So what I did is I just grabbed this rec light and I just animated the intensity. So you can see that the intensity goes, uh, let me make it smaller so you can see the difference. It has this keyframes right now at zero, goes to six, to zero, to six, zero, to six. And there's a little bit of in-betweens because, you know, when light turns on and off, it doesn't just turn on and off instantly. It, there's, a, there's a little bit of a delay in there with the camera and all that to make it just a tad realistic. So I made my animation right here as I wanted and I kind of duplicated, just made small variations in this one, just eliminate a couple frames. So I could have this part here. Now you don't see the alien because I have turned him off, but the alien would usually be right here. I just, what I did is in post, I removed the part where he was present. So let me see if I go to my alien so you guys can see the alien. Let's go over here, turn him on. There he is, looking menacing. Let's go back to where our lights are. There we go. You can see he's being lit right there. And he actually looks pretty cool. I think I should have shown this part because it looks pretty terrifying. So as you can see, it's just the light flickering. And one of the reasons why I took him out is because otherwise I would have had to animate it because he looks really static right now. So there you go. That's just that lighting in there. 
if you want to have some flicker and lighting all you have to do is add a in this case i'm using a rec light you're going to see throughout most of my scenes that i use rec lights that i try not to use point light as much point lights are usually used for fill lights i use rec lights to simulate uh, regular lights sometimes i also use pot lights but i seldom use um, these point lights now what i did is i added my rec light and i animated my intensity you could also animate the visibility if you wanted to that's also an option if you don't want to animate the intensity but because i was going through the, for this particular look the if you animate the visibility it's a little bit harsher all right let's back to a camera and as you can see the other thing that i did was i i kind of turned the camera but we'll, we'll go into that in uh, later on in the video now for this close-up, we are still with the same kind of lighting that I had over there. And let me go back to game view because the cameras are in the way. I had a couple of shots here, different shots. This one wasn't my favorite because again, it's lacking the pinpoint lights on his eyes, although the shadowing on his face is really good, in my opinion. Oh, this is the part where he stands up and goes, and this is the part where he just walks away. Now, over here, I made sure that I had some lights here. There weren't lights in this part, but I made sure that I had some rec lights in this section. Let me see if I can show it to you. While he's walking, there's a rec light here and there's a rec light here. The reason for that is because when he walked away, he was in complete shadows because I didn't have a particular light in there. So I mean, you know, it makes sense that a, a sci-fi space station would have certain lights around here. So he just walks and you can see the light going past him and he keeps walking. And then that's why I actually panned the camera to the other side because I figured he was just want to walk away and you wouldn't see what just happened. But then he I just um, made him disappear and the camera actually focuses on this part. All right, and just to show you a little bit, and you can see the lights that I have here. I have always my key light to one side, then I have my fill light over here, and then I have a little bit of a helping light that's coming from down here for when he's lying down. Because when he was lying down, let's go back here, let's go into camera. Actually, let me, uh, yeah, we are in that right here, game view. And I don't know why it takes a little bit to load his mustache. But when he was here, if I were to turn off this rec light, you can see that it is barely noticeable. But when I was rendering, it was giving me a little bit of a flickering. Just adding this light actually took away some of the flickering and it didn't affect the shadows this much. Future editing here. I think you saw an icon for a skylight that I had in there. Now, I didn't talk about the skylight because what I am about to do after I did the post-processing thing that you are going to see next, I figured that the skylight was not doing much for me. So I actually turned that off and part of the reason why I didn't talk about it in the video. Now let's get back to the actual video. You go into global illumination. You can see that I have lumen enabled and reflections also enabled here. And you may think this is obvious, like it's lumen. Yeah, it's running on lumen, but until you turn it on in the post-processing volume, it makes a world of difference. So here I am with my post-processing volume and global illumination lumen off because I think, hey, you know, lumen should be on by default, right? No, it's not. So make sure you have a post-processing volume in your scene with lumen on because look at this difference. See, the difference is to me, it's night and day. So it's very important that when you're lighting your scene, once you finish lighting your scene, because, you know, I was happy with the shadows. I was uh, good with everything that I had in here. It's just, you know, it wasn't rendering correctly. And I didn't want to keep adding more light. So if you turn this on, you can see that there is more global illumination. There's more balanced lights. And there are some settings here that I added from uh, William Foucher video. Um, you know, I watch Will Foucher. I also follow him on Twitter. Uh, he has a very good tutorials on lighting. So these are some of the settings that he recommended for uh, to getting good global illumination. And it's actually pretty good. As you can see here, night and day. 
actually turn reflections on it's not doing much in this scene because there's not that many reflections but it's really important in this case that you have lumen turned on before we leave these scenes is that i changed the material of this alien so if i go into his material i will click I actually made a emissive map for the alien and i'm multiplying it by 60 you can see that you may be thinking 60 is a lot, but once you once you are in this kind of darkness, 60 is actually not that much. So make sure when you're doing emissives that you experiment with a lot uh, instead of you know just increasing by so small because when you have a dark scene, um, the emissives can take a lot to um, look correctly and not correctly but look good in a scene. Now with this particular alien, I wasn't going for the emissives to light up his face or anything. It's just some eyes that were popping up in there because uh, I wasn't going to try to light this character with emissives. One of the things that I found with Unreal Engine 5, and I believe I've, I've said this in a previous video, is try not to light your scenes with emissives. Try to light it with actual light because it's just much better. It's more accurate. It's going to produce a lot less noise when rendering it may look good in your editor but for rendering it's a little bit better if you have an actual light all right everybody that is it for this video make sure you tune in to the next one so i can walk you through how i made this whole space station scene make sure you ring that bell for notifications i'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter so you all don't get bored because metrics says that people don't like very long videos on my channel so make sure you're still for next week. There's a patron if you want to help out the channel. On the screen, you're going to see all my patrons, level one and level two. Level two, get early access to my videos. And remember, there's a Discord. If you have any questions, follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram as well. All links below. Uh, remember, there's a playlist if you are brand new to doing this kind of thing. I'm going to leave some playlists for beginners to just get you into the engine and get you into the process of how I did all this. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.